Welcome to this Photoshop in 30 seconds tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com where we're going through all the tools and features and everything in Photoshop. These tutorials are a little bit longer than 30 seconds, but we have fun with them all the same. Now, as I came down the toolbar here and arrived at these shape tools, I put some time into thinking how I was going to have some fun with these because I mean, let's be honest, they're kind of boring tools. So I'm going to group them up here, and today we're going to talk about the rectangle and the rounded rectangle tool. There are a lot of neat little things you can do with these tools. Uh, just so we have an easier time, I'm going to give this a uh, little fill maybe of yellow, and I'm going to dump the stroke. So just like that, you can see, obviously, you can make a shape, and if you make a shape layer with this tool, you can adjust the fill and the stroke. You can also just draw a path or just make it a straight-up pixel-based layer, which... Uh, it is something that I do very rarely. If you have the ability to make it a vector shape, go ahead and do that. You can always add dodging and burning and things like that if you absolutely need shading, etc., 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 in uh, non-destructive ways and maintain your original path-based shapes. Uh, we have some options for setting uh, of stroke and things like that. It's all very intuitive, uh, but let's take a look at this. So we drag out a shape. When I start to drag out a shape, if I realize, you know what, uh, I actually need to move the shape, you can hold down the space bar and just position the shape wherever you want. So I'm going to drop it right over here. And by the way, isn't this a great photo of the Grand Canyon? I'm just going to drop that rectangle there. And when we've done that, uh, well, we can just delete that because we've gone over the little tip about using the space bar. If you hold down the shift key and you drag out, well, if I don't right click, if I hold down the shift key and I drag out, I'm constrained to a perfect square. If I hold down the alt key and drag out, it drags the shape out from the center point. If I hold down alt and shift, it drags out a perfect square from like the center. You can see right there, just drags it right out of the center wherever from, you know, of wherever I drag. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, now, we have some cool hotkeys, and speaking of the shift and alt keys, there are various ways that you can use them. So let's say we drag out a shape, and then we realize, you know what, we want to add to this shape. So what we can do is we can start dragging out another shape, but if we hold down the shift key, that's going to constrain our proportions, okay? But you can see it's just created another shape layer. This has happened because up here, we have this set to create a new layer. So every time we draw out a shape, it's going to create a new layer. But what if we want to expand upon this rectangle? Well, if we hold down the shift key, now this works when you've already placed a shape or are working on a shape layer. If you hold down the shift key, you can see we get the little plus icon, and yes, it's constraining us to a perfect square let's say we don't want a square well just hold down the shift key and start dragging then let go of the shift key drag out you know like a rectangle or whatever you want and you can see it's adding this shape to our shape layer so that's pretty cool now if we hold down the alt key and drag out yes it drags out from the center but if we let go of the alt key once we start dragging it's going to subtract from this shape so you're gonna see it's gonna cut a big chunk out of our shape so we're working on the same layer. The shift key adds to uh, your shape. The alt key subtracts from your shape. But just know, so, oh, well, and I guess I should also throw in there, let me just undo some of this mess that I've created. Um, if you want to just c actually create a perfect square, right, you might think, oh, hold on the shift key, drag out, uh, drag out a new shape, right? Well, of course, that's going to add it to this original layer. But what you want to do to prevent that from happening is start dragging out your square, then hold down shift, and then if you need to reposition, obviously we've already gone over, grab the space bar, position it right where you want, and let go, and you can see we have a shape that's cre well, it's created a new shape layer. So it's a little complicated. Go back and rewatch what I just explained five or ten times, and you'll probably understand it uh, by the end of that. Now, up here in the control bar, we have some options to just create a square straight up. We don't use any hotkeys. It's just always going to create a square. It's never going to allow us to create a uh, rectangle or any other shape. We can choose a fixed size. We can set a proportion, right? So we can just say always make it a two-to-one type rectangle, right? That's kind of cool. Uh, and we also have an option to just always draw from the center, which essentially allows you to forego holding down the alt key if need be, if you're having some trouble with that. I'm going to go back to unconstrained and uh, from the center. Now, one of the other things before we go get on to the rounded rectangle tool, which is going to be, which is going to go quick, you can just click once and choose to create a rectangle of exact specification. So if we know we need something that's 200 by 175 pixels, hit OK, and there's our little shape. You can see we've got it. Boom. Great. Cool. All right. So the rounded rectangle. Now, the rounded rectangle is located beneath the rectangle tool. Everything's the same up here. You can see all the stuff is the same. It works the same exact way, but we have this radius option. This is the roundedness of the corners of your rectangle. So 20 pixels is mm, not really that rounded. It all depends on the size of your image. If we up this to 200, well, if I can type, there we go, 200, and we drag out a rectangle, you can see it's 
far more rounded. So it's just rounding over the course of 200 pixels or 20 pixels or whatever uh, you may have. Now, if you drag out a rounded rectangle like this, right, we've got our new shape layer. Let's say you send it off to the client and the client says, hey, I love it, but the rounded rectangle is far too rounded. Well, you can open up the trusty properties panel, which has opened up for us here, and you can change the size of those rounded corners by just hitting like uh, punching in 100. And if you have the link checked on, all the corners are going to be set the same. Now, if you unlink all of the corners you can set maybe a couple of your corners to 100 but then maybe we don't we want some of our corners not to have whoop let's uh it, don't worry if you get some craziness like that i just accidentally clicked i'm going to go to the move tool i'm just moving this out i'm going to get rid of the original rectangle so we can see what exactly we're working on here just some housekeeping and i'm going to set this corner to zero as well and you can see we have this like i don't know it was like trendy uh, if i don't know five years ago or something doing these sort of have you know two corners rounded one corner not and still can be great if it's used properly so the rectangle tool the rounded rectangle tool they're really powerful. They're really interesting. They're pretty deep tools. Um, oh, and you know what? I forgot one thing. Align edges. Just keep it checked on. It's kind of difficult to explain what this does. It deals with how precise the edges of your shape are. But if I'm going to open up my preferences here. Under tools, if you have snap vector tools and transforms to pixel grid checked on, you don't really have to worry about your align edges. That, that setting and preferences under tools, that's going to give you the most precise edge. If you uncheck that and you uncheck align edges, you're going to probably almost always get some kind of anti-aliasing slash minor blurring on the edges of your shapes so I just tend to leave it checked on it doesn't really do much as long as I have that preference set but it's definitely something to keep in the back of your mind so align edges is sort of like in between having anti-aliasing and the power and precision of this snap vector tools and transforms to pixel grid option checked on boy that is a mouthful so for the rectangle tool and the rounded rectangle tool in Photoshop in a in a Photoshop in 30 seconds tutorial that's gone far longer than 30 seconds that's it Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsonTutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.